All right, hey guys, and welcome back to today's video. So today we are going to be finally adding stuff into the five gallon Fluval Evo Aquarium. Now this is gonna be a frag tank kind of. I'm gonna be cutting some coral from my 120 gallon in today's video and putting it in this aquarium. We're also gonna throw a fish in here and some invertebrate. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the fish and the invertebrates, and then we'll do corals down the road, which for you is in like a couple minutes. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is take the cover off of the aquarium and get back here to the filtration. So this is biomedia from my established aquarium, meaning it already has all the good bacteria we need. So I'm gonna take some of these bio balls out from back here, just like so. Take this biomedia and push it right back here. There's still filter floss under it, but I just put the biomedia on top. Now this tank is effectively cycled and we're ready to add some animals. Before we do that though, let me show you around the tank. So we did add a zoa frag. These are zoas from my tank. I've cut them and then put them on this frag plug. We're gonna be getting more zoas in here today. So this is just the first little frag I have. And then we have two little frags of waving hand down here at the bottom. They're just sitting there attaching to the substrate. But other than that, that's the only thing living in this tank today. But we're gonna change that and get a few creatures to get this tank jump started even more. Okay, so this aquarium is five gallons, so stocking wise, we can't do anything too crazy. So for now, I just got a small colorful fish. This is not gonna be a forever fish. This is just gonna be a fish that we're gonna keep in here in the meantime to keep the cycle going. And then once this whole quarantine thing is over, I can look around and find the perfect fish for this aquarium. But right now, as a placeholder, just to keep the cycle going, we have a yellow tailed damsel. And then once we are done with this fish in this tank, he will just go back into my 120. And then also I got a little bit of red ogo macroalgae. You know, macroalgae is great because it helps reduce nitrates in aquariums. Well, this is a fairly new aquarium, so we don't have too much nitrate, which is good. You don't want too much. That's the point of the algae is to keep it down. But I just got a tiny bit to see if it would grow in here. And then I also got a little red leg hermit crab that will help pick up some of the algae as it develops. So I'm gonna start by just putting these in here to acclimate. And then once we get our fish and our inverts in tonight, tomorrow we can do some of the corals. So I'm probably gonna do some more soft corals, just probably some more zoanthids for now. I'm gonna frag them out of my 120 gallon, put them in here on these frag plugs and they can go ahead and grow and recover in this tank. Because after you snip them off and glue them to a plug, it takes a little bit of time for them to sort of recover from that. So they're gonna do that in this aquarium because this tank's parameters are very similar to the parameters in my main aquarium. So I'm gonna go ahead and let these guys acclimate, which really they only need to acclimate for temperature. Other than that, the parameters are very, very similar. But this little damsel is a perfect size for this aquarium and it will be very lively and very active in here. And then we can maybe trade him out for a cool designer clownfish or something later down the road. But for now, he's gonna be in here to keep the cycle in this aquarium alive. As for these waving hands, they're doing good down here. Once again, they're just attaching to the ground. Later. Well, I thought I was recording, but I wasn't, but I just put the crab in after he was acclimating. I just dropped him down there, so he's a little bit in shock um, and upside down, but he will fix himself. And then I put the red ogu right there in the frag rack. Uh, I'll put some zoanthid frags around it, so it'll kind of blend in a little bit better. But for now, it's just sitting there, and because it's under this light, this light's pretty powerful, so it should grow and be good at nutrient export. So now, let's go ahead and get the damsel in. Now, damsels are great beginner fish, extremely hardy and extremely cheap. Very aggressive though, so they're not recommended in community tanks just because they can be kind of ornery sometimes. But in this aquarium, because he's the only fish, he will be perfectly fine in the meantime before we, you know, get him out of here. And he goes right into the tank. And of course the red ogo already blew out of the frag rack. Great. So there's the blue damsel in the tank. He will like it in here. This is a perfect size tank for him. He will be totally fine in here for the meantime. But now I need to go in here and fix the red ogo. Okay, so everything's just gonna chill in here for now and then tomorrow we'll cut some frags from the 120 gallon and get some more coral in here. Okay, that red ogo is not gonna stay where I want it to go. It's just gonna land wherever it wants to go. That's what I've determined. <laughs> but I'll see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow. Alrighty, so it is the next day and the fish is doing really well. Here he is. This is once again that yellow tailed damsel. He has been doing really good in here and just chilling out. But now let's go ahead and cut some coral from the big tank. Okay, and here we are at the 120 and I'm gonna show you how I frag some coral. Now the way I do it is definitely not the best possible way. It's just the easiest way I've found. I've tried taking the rock out of the water using a razor blade and it just hasn't worked how I wanted it to and it ended up doing more damage than the method I normally do. So some of the equipment I have are these scissors. It's not gonna focus on them. There's nothing I can do. A turkey baster and then a little specimen container. I'm gonna dip this container in the water and now I'm gonna have a tiny little reservoir of water right up top. Now zoning in on the coral we're looking for, it's gonna be these guys back here. Now whenever fragging corals, you wanna make sure to be careful 
Um, if you're fragging them out of water, wear goggles. I'm not. I'm doing it in water, so you don't have to wear goggles, obviously. Still, wearing gloves is important. I'm wearing gloves. And make sure when you do fragging to throw some carbon in your aquarium to help uh, take out some of the chemicals that the coral will release when it's cut. So I'm just going to go in here and right off the bat I'm going to grab one of these waving hands. So I don't want them to shrink too much so I can't see them. So I'm just going to grab one right here and just snip it off. Flies away. Let me just grab it. You can use a turkey baster to grab it or your hands and right into the container it goes. Now these zoanthids are starting to overtake this waving hand so we need to frag them. So I'm literally going to take them and snip them just like that. And then I'm going to come in here with the turkey baster and suck them out. So just take the one we cut like that and right in the specimen container. Now I'm going to do that probably five times just to get the ones that are growing over the waving hand. So I'm just going to snip these off. Once again, you want to be careful. And then just make sure you suck them out with the turkey baster before they can release too much slime. It's probably really hard for you to see, but this is as close as my camera can get. But I'm going to do this a few more times, grab all our corals from this colony and another small zoanthid colony, which is right up there, that purple rock, you can barely see it. But I'm going to get all of these cut and then I'll show you how I attach them to frag plugs. Eventually. Okay, so here is now where we're going to attach them to frag plugs. So I made the mistake of accidentally putting all the zoas in the same cup. So I don't know which zoas are which. That's going to be fun. But what I'm going to do is take tweezers and grab the top of the zoa by its head. So if you can kind of see, you can see parts where it's closed up. It's a little hard for you to see on camera. But the side that has the polyp that when it opens up will show. You want to grab it by that. And then we're going to put a tiny little dot of super glue on here and stick the bottom part right on. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in um, just a time lapse. It's going to be very simple. I mean, it's pretty easy. We're going to do a little dot of super glue and then stick the Zoa right on top. It's going to be very simple and then I'll show you how everything looks as soon as it's done. So here is the first one. As you can see, we have all three polyps um, basically just glued down. I didn't put a little bit too much glue. It's not focusing perfectly, but this is the first frag plug done. I'm going to dip it in the water, which will go ahead and let it start to cure. And now I'm going to take the other two frag plugs, do the exact same thing, and then I'll be back and show you all of them, and then we can get them into the frag tank. Okay, so I got them all cut and pasted basically. Uh, one of them I think I cut in the wrong spot, so I'm not quite sure if it will make it. But they're just going to acclimate temperature to this aquarium now. And then the waving hand, they don't do good on frag plugs, so I'm not gluing that one to a frag plug. It will just go down in the sand with these other ones, which are all closed up. Because the damselfish that we put in here sprayed sand all over them and caused them to get all closed up. Same with these guys. I just went ahead and cleaned off these uh, frags. This is a frag I made about a week ago, and they're starting to recover. They need about two weeks to heal after being cut. So that's why they go into this tank to heal. Um, they're all closed up right now because I just hit them with the turkey baster to try to get some of that brown algae off. They normally don't look like that. They normally are wide and open. So they do recover after about one to two weeks. But I'm just going to let these guys temp acclimate and then I'm going to get some of the water from here into here, get them all acclimated to the parameters of this aquarium, and then we can put them on the frag rack. Later. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes and I just added a little bit of tank water into here to better acclimate these guys. Now I'm literally just going to grab the frag plug. I did my best to get all the green and brown zoas on one plug and the purple ones on another plug. So I'm just going to put these guys right in the little holes on the frag rack. So that's the green zoas. This one right here is the purple zoas, which I think I might have killed one on accident. Uh, we'll have to see though, he might come back. I've never had a zoa die yet by doing this method, but we're about to find out. Then this next one is another green zoa. Now these aren't frags like I'm selling them. These are frags that I'm going to let them heal and grow up in here and hopefully cover the frag plug and then refrag into stuff I could sell if that makes sense. So right now I'm just going to try to get them to heal and grow and then we can think about selling stuff down the road. Okay, so there's our frags. It's hard for you to see just because the color contrast is super bad, but we now have four frags of zoanthids and three frags of waving hand down here. 
Now, um, I'm hoping they'll do really good. Of course, I'll give updates on this. We also have our little yellow tail damsel and our hermit crab right in there on the rocks. So overall, this tank's doing really, really well. The macroalgae actually fell behind this rock, so you can't see it right now, but it is still here and doing good. I also went ahead and upgraded the filter chamber right here with this little basket that's designed to help hold the filter floss right next to the filter crates for better mechanical filtration and to leave more room for the biological filtration. Now that is pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and good bye.